When you're in a car that's passing over a hill, people sometimes notice they get a funny feeling inside their stomach, and it actually feels like you become lighter for a moment. What's actually happening is the normal force acting on you by your car seat is decreasing. And if you're ever on a roller coaster, and the roller coaster is traveling very fast over a hill like that, and you're on top there, there. For a second, you feel weightless. You feel like you don't weigh anything. Now, the gravity force is still acting on you. It's not as though gravity is being eliminated. But the normal force has become zero when you're weightless. And you might actually find yourself lifted off the seat a little bit. In this question, we're going to examine how that actually happens. So there's a car moving over a hill, and we'll say the hill has a radius. It's a perfect circle, and it has radius. So this line extends way down there to the center of that white line, which is part of a circle. So that white line forms a circle, uh, the center of which this line points to. I hope that's clear. So R is equal to 25 meters. The radius of the circle, which that white line is describing, is 25 meters. The car, in the first case, is moving at a speed of 10 meters per second. Let's figure out the normal force acting on the car, and then we'll find the normal force acting on the man in the car. So I'll draw the man, actually we'll sit him on top of the car in this case, just so we can be clear about what's happening. He has mass 500 kilograms. Sorry, that's silly. He has mass 80 kilograms. And the car has mass 420 kilograms. The combined mass is 500 kilograms. So first of all, the normal force on the car since the man is standing on the car, and we'll say he's actually attached to the car, we can take the car and the man as one object, and that's going to make it easier for us to find the normal force on the car. So the man and the car are one object. So M is equal to 500. And the man-car combined object is traveling in a circle when it passes over the top of that hill. So the net force is going to be mv squared on r, 500 times v squared on 25. The net force is equal to 500 times 100 on 25, 2000 newtons. In which direction? Towards the center of the circle in which this object is traveling, straight down. That net force is made up of the gravity force, drawn in blue here, which would be 500 times 10 or 5,000 newtons, and the normal force acting straight up on the car there. Which force is bigger? Well, the net force has to act straight down, so the gravity force has to be bigger than the normal force. The net force, 2,000 newtons, is equal to the gravity force, 5,000, which is acting in the same direction, so I've made them both, both positive, take away the normal force, which is actually interfering with that, those forces trying to pull this car in a circle. So if we take N over this side, we get N take 2,000, oops, sorry, N plus 2,000, is equal to 5,000, and then we get N is equal to 3,000 newtons. So the normal force on the car is equal to 3,000 newtons. Now, the normal force on the man. Forget for a moment that the man is actually at that height there. We'll just assume the man is on that path there. The radius equals 25 meters. The man is also moving in a circle. So the net force on the man is equal to m times v squared on r. 
80 times 10 squared on 25, that's 320 newtons. And that net force is made up of his gravity force, 800 newtons, take away the normal force of the car on his feet. So that's the mystery. So we have the net force, 320, which is downwards, is made up of 800 take away n. n is equal to 800 take 320, which is equal to 480 newtons. 480. Oh. As the car starts moving faster, as speed goes up, the force required to keep this car moving in a circle, or in this case, to keep the car on the road, because the road is the circle, also goes up. So speed goes up, the force required to keep it on the road goes up. As the force required to keep it on the road goes up, the normal force will, as if it knows what you're trying to do, shrink down. So that way the net force is higher in that direction there because as normal gets smaller, the normal plus the gravity is bigger in that direction there. Finally, when the normal force cannot shrink anymore, the car will fly off the road. And that's when there's no more force acting up on the road to the tires. So the car follows a path sort of like that. It flies off the hill. We want to figure out at what speed that actually occurs. So I'll move this working over here. So we'll say that's the lift off speed. That's what we want to find. And at that speed, as we said before, when the car does lift off, the normal force is equal to zero. So if we redraw the force diagram, taking away these forces here, I'll re-include the man at the top, and we're taking now the man and the car as one object, we've got the gravity force acting down like that, which is equal to 5,000 newtons, but we don't have the normal force. So there's only really one force acting on the car at this point, the gravity force. So the net force is equal to 5,000 newtons directly down. At the liftoff speed, the car, even though we said um, if we make it go really fast, it will fly off like that. At the liftoff speed, the car will continue moving in a circle. It just won't feel any force between the tires there. So the object at the liftoff speed is still moving in a circle. If we made it any faster, it would no longer move in a circle. So we can say if it is moving in a circle, net force is equal to mv squared on r, or 5,000 is equal to 500 times v squared on 25, 25 times 5,000 divided by 500 is equal to v squared. The square root of 25 times 5,000 on 500 is equal to the square root of 25 times 10, which comes to 15.8 meters per second squared. I'll show you one other interesting aspect to this question. When the object lifts off, that's when the acceleration due to gravity, which is 10 meters a second squared, is the same as the acceleration required to keep the object moving in a circle. So what you can say is that 10, or AC, and we'll say the acceleration due to gravity is equal to the centripetal acceleration. So 10 is equal to v squared on r. That means r times 10 square rooted equals v. And that also comes to the square root of 25 times 10, which is 15.8 meters per second. That's a shortcut to get the answer to that last question.